Hi, Jeff Causey back here. Uh, doing a new video on how to set up a route using uh, Google Maps and Garmin Basecamp. The idea being that, of course, you could use either one to set up a route for yourself that is follows a, a predefined path. Uh, like we often use uh, for our car club rallies and runs but if you want to be able to share the GPX file uh, with others you need to be able to generate one um, and so that takes a little bit more work uh, and since the last video that I did uh, showing my workflow for getting this done there's been a lot of changes to both uh, the Google Maps product and Garmin Basecamp. Um, overall both of them are better in most ways. Uh, there are some limitations to Google Maps that are a little bit frustrating to deal with um, but um, you can get around them and, and overall the process is a lot quicker now. So for this video uh, I'm using a route that I'm laying out uh, for one of our club members that's getting ready to attend an event. This particular route is going to run from Helen, Georgia up to Asheville, North Carolina. It's not very complicated. You can see I've already uh, used uh, his uh, map that he put together. I'll zoom back out here using the normal Google Maps product that most people are probably familiar with. It's a little four hour, 25 minute route. Um, but I use the My Maps uh, product. It's been Maps Engine uh, over the last couple years. It was recently changed by Google. Uh, so the first thing I had to do was uh, get everything set up over here in, in My Maps. So you can see that I've gone ahead and created some points. Uh, I'll, I'll zoom out just so you can kind of see uh, some points. Uh, you'll learn how to figure these out as you uh, do these maps. But um, generally, just like before, you want to put them right after an intersection. That way the, GP, uh, the GPS unit you're using will go ahead and calculate a route on through the intersection before it throws up that you arrived at a point. Uh, and I tend to think that may work a little bit better for people who have newer Garmin units in that route planner software um, or trip planner, I'm not sure what they call it. Um, it doesn't work nearly as good as what they used to have. Um, but anyway, uh, so to start with, we're going to start here at our point. Um, just real quickly, in case you're not familiar with the My Maps product, um, so you have a bunch of layers. One of the limitations is you can only have about 10 points in a route. So I have more than 10 here, so I'm going to have to do two parts to this. So I start out on my points layer, go to my starting point, hit the little directions button in this box. My next point is uh, this 050. You can see if you start typing, it brings it up. Put that in, and I will swap them. Um, and so now I'm just going to start adding additional points. So I have 060. And I just keep going and adding points. Uh, what comes after uh, 100? Just keep adding points like this. You can see that the uh, it's slowly building the route. Uh, let's see. I think I will do one more here. One sixty, 
And I'll just go back and look. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. That looks like it's uh, following pretty much the same route up to this little town of Clayton. Yep. Okay, so that's our first part. Um, and so I ended at 160, so I have to go find that point, start a new set of directions on a new layer. And again, I will just swap the starting points. Uh, 230, 250, uh, 270. Oops. What was my ending point? Oh, 350. You notice I used kind of the same idea that I did in the last one of putting some space between the numbers uh, in case I needed to fill in uh, some detail. This is a pretty simple route though, so I'm not expecting there to be any problems. Oh, but we see right here, instead of taking 151 on up, it decided to just get right back on the parkway. Uh, so we'll just go in here. Now we have to go back up and select our points layer. You can tell by this little blue line over here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Drop in a new point here. Call it 300. Save. Now I can go back down add this destination and I can drag to reorder I have found that if you have a full set of points already and you delete a point and then try to add one back and reorder uh, the my maps product gets a little flaky and doesn't like that so you may have a little trouble so that's why I try to stop you know once I get to about letter G letter H, even though I might could squeeze one more in there. Uh, let's see, I think um, I think that's pretty much uh, how he had, oops, how he had the route going. Yep, alright, so that looks good. Alright, and um, oops. I will just uh, rename this this layer part two and I'll rename this one Oops. part one um, I do like to name my layer that has my points points um, but you can really name it anything you want or just leave it as layer one which is the default you can see up here uh, there is a place to put in a name for the route and a little description um, I try to do that just for uh, uh, to help keep all my maps straight because I have so many. All right, now that that is done, what we're going to do is export to KML. This is where it works a little bit better than it used to. We don't really need the entire map. Uh, I'm just going to grab the points, and download. And you can see it has downloaded it. Uh, obviously, I've done this before because you see the little parentheses there showing Finder. And so it's highlighted there. Uh, now we're going to go over to uh, the Garmin Basecamp. Let's see. And you can see that I've got it on uh, my collection. We'll go up here to File, Import. Give me a second for the dialog window to open. So it's going to go right to Downloads and the most recent item, of course. Uh, well, maybe it's not going to the most recent. Uh, here's our Points 1 file. I'm going to import that. 
I could have renamed it if I wanted to just to make things easier. So you can see that it has now added uh, one of these lists and you can see all of those same points numbered in order, same descriptions. Um, I'm going to go in here and rename this to just so I know what it is in my collection. And just like before, uh, if you're familiar with Basecamp, you know you can take all of these points, highlight them, right click to create a route. Uh, it puts them right in order, it calculates. Uh, I'm just going to double check uh, about four hours, 157 miles. Yeah, so so. I think that's probably right. I'm just going to change the color there. Gonna change this so I can give it a shorter name. Blitz. I think I'll actually add the year here. Okay, close that. Now let's just go and get it to double click to get it to highlight it. Uh, and let's see. So it looks like we might have. Uh, let's see what it did here. So it did do the loop around. Clayton. Yeah, okay, maybe. Yep, looks like it did okay up to Highway 28. You can see just how much easier this is compared to before, uh, where I had to go in and make a lot of manual adjustments. Uh, not sure what it's doing here in Highlands. I didn't just bring it in straight in. That might be a map issue or something but it gets you through highlands they'll be able to find their way uh on up 64 you can say it turns off on 215 like we thought we wanted up to the parkway so see it's just following right along just like we had it laid out in both uh, maps and my maps. Uh, 151, yep, very good. Let's zoom out a little bit. Up to 23 and on into uh, downtown. Well, kind of took a little funky different route there, but they'll, they'll be okay with that, I think. All right. So that's all you do. Uh, if you want to produce the uh, GPX, then oops, get that highlighted again. Go to File, uh, Export, and it is going to any minute now. Give us an option. Uh, you see, I save everything into a one file here. I'm going to change this to uh, 2015 J. Cole. So I like to keep my extensions lowercase, export, and that should be good to go. Load it onto the uh, GPS and get to motoring. And thank you for watching.